So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go over just a proper front headlock position. So what this typically looks like is you've got one arm around the person's neck, you've got the other arm under their arm on this side, and then you'll see people just put their chest on the back and hold this position here, okay? Um, I want to do this in a way that's much heavier, and much more technical. So what I want to do is I want to line this shoulder up right here with, with the base of his spine. I want to be here, okay? Right, I'm sorry, right at the base of the neck. And I'm going to loop my arm around his neck on that same side, okay? Now, if I wasn't explaining to you guys, I'd be looking this way the entire time. So I want to do this, okay? Shoulder centered right at the base of the neck. This arm is still going to loop under his arm, and I'm going to put my hands together in such a way that hides my choking hand. This is around his neck. That's my choking hand, so I'm going to wrap my hand over my knuckles like this. I'm going to be here. Now, I want to be heavy on him, so I don't just want to be resting on my knees. If, again, if I wasn't explaining, and I didn't want Tim dying the entire time I'm explaining this, what I would do is I would get off my knees, put all my weight on my toes, and I'd shift my right hip and right shoulder into him. I would do this. And that's a major difference in weight between being here and being here. This is what I want. Okay. So I just want to touch up that little detail before we get into the rest of the technique because that really does matter. So now we're going to talk about making the transition to the back. So from that position, I'm going to unclasp my grip and I'm going to spin 90 degrees toward the back. Now I'm going to have Tim just turn a little bit so y'all can see some details on the immobilization here, okay? So I've got my left knee tight to his shin near his ankle and then this foot's based 45 degrees from the body. I will then be rewrapping my seat belt grip. Okay, the same grip I had out front, but I have to let it go and then rewrap it once I get to this position. My right arm is still my choking arm. My left arm is still under his armpit. It's just a different configuration now. So a couple notes on this position. When you get here, people will often have a desire and a tendency to ride too high in the back. So what I mean is they tend to put their chest mid back. They tend to wrap really deep here where their elbow gets hidden. Now, I'm not gonna have Tim roll me because I'll just roll out of frame, you guys won't be able to see, but if I hide this elbow too deep, he can trap that arm and he can execute an arm roll to this direction and then I'm gonna go from top to bottom. Especially as a smaller guy, this is not what I want. I wanna stay on top. So when I create this new seatbelt here, I always wanna be able to see my elbow and then I'm gonna drop myself back and low. So more like riding chest on the side in this position and that ensures that I'm not gonna lose the top position, okay? So we're gonna go over three different back takes today. Okay, first one, very, very simple. The second one, a little more intermediate level. And the last one's gonna be advanced, okay? So first, the simple one. When you get to this position, and the person on the bottom doesn't really totally understand all the nuances of grappling yet, one thing they'll often do is they'll just try to get up because they don't really know what else to do. They wanna get back up to their feet because that's the natural place to be, okay? So as I feel him start to get up, I'm just gonna take this hook and I'm gonna drop it in. I'm just gonna swing it around. I'm gonna go heel inside, okay? Now, you might want to go to the side and start trying to take the person's back right away, but if you do that, there's a good chance that you're gonna fall into a bad angle and they're gonna get away. So what you should do is you should practice getting up to your back foot centering yourself on the back, and then kicking yourself to the side. And I bring him with me. So now I'm on his back, I've got a tight seat belt, and I've got my bottom hook in, okay? Let's talk a little bit about what I wanna be doing with the seat belt at this point. So I'm gonna have Tim just open his arms up so you can see all the details here. Once again, I'm still covering up my choking hand with the knuckles. I'm thinking about putting my hands through his sternum to, to connect to mine. I'm thinking about closing my elbows down super tight, then one detail I think that gets lost a lot is what I do with my bottom shoulder here, okay? It's gonna be a little hard to see, but what I wanna do is I wanna take that shoulder and I wanna push it into the back of his head to further, to further tighten the space. So I'm gonna go from here to here, okay? So it's like I'm making a little pillow behind his head with my right shoulder. If I don't do that, he's gonna have more room to twist and squirm, so I'm just gonna really connect the, the front of my shoulder to the back of his head, okay? And last but not least, of course, if I wasn't talking to you guys, I would loop my chin over his shoulder and I would go ear to ear, super tight, okay? Think of a backpack, that's what we want. So once I get to this position, top hook needs to go in. Now again, against somebody who's not a very experienced grappler, they're not gonna know any better. They're just gonna let me drop this top hook in and then I've got full control. Pinning my heels, squeezing my knees in tight on the hips, securing my position. 
On the off chance the person understands what to do here, he makes the elbow knee connection, which makes it difficult for this hook to drop in, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna base my foot on the mat, I'm gonna do a little bit of a hip escape to give myself a little more slack, and then I can take my heel, put it in the hip pocket, and I can bully my way down the quad into the hook position. Might give your partner a Charlie horse on the way, but now I've got my four points for the back control, and I'm ready to get some attacks going. So now this is the intermediate level back take. So the first one is gonna work really well against beginners. This one's gonna work a little bit better against your experienced white belts, your blue belts, people that understand that they don't want their back taken and they don't want me to get those hooks in as readily, okay? So we're starting the same position. I'm still gonna unclasp. I'm still gonna spin, but as I spin, I'm not gonna stop. I'm not gonna put this knee down in the mat. I'm gonna reclasp my seatbelt, and then all in one motion, never touching this knee to the mat, I'm gonna to fall to my outside hip, I'm gonna slam my shin into his shin, sort of door stopping him, and then I'm gonna get my bottom hook in. So I go from here to here. As you can see, we're ending up in the same position that we were in before for that beginner's back take, okay? Uh, just did it a slightly different way. So I still wanna get this top hook in, we can do that the same way. Now the person's definitely gonna be guarding with that elbow knee connection, so once again, we can put this foot on the mat, hip escape a little bit for some slack. I do like to use my heel. Again, I put it right where his leg meets his, his hip and I bully through his hip and that quad muscle sort of Charlie horse the person a little bit. I get my second hook in, okay? Now from this position, we're gonna set up um, one of the most basic bow and arrow variations, a nice uh, two lapel choke on the collars here. So just uh, for simplicity's sake and for learning, I'm just gonna have Tim not hand fight. In fact, he's gonna open his hands up so you can all see exactly what's going on with these collars, okay? My primary objective when I first land here is to take the arm that's under his arm, I'm gonna grab and I'm gonna punch this collar down. And I'm doing that with the objective of taking all the slack out of it. Because I wanna take all the slack out of that collar. And I also wanna get this thumb inside. I focus on punching all the slack out and then I'll actually pull my shoulder back a little bit so I can get a better angle for my thumb to go in. Right now, if I try to grab the collar, I find myself coming this way, and it's difficult to find the angle. But if I pull back, now it sinks in really well. And I can make a, I can make a really strong grip. I'll make a full grip with all my fingers. Once I make this grip, I'm gonna think about letting go of that original grip and jumping over to the opposite collar. Okay, about a fist length away from the original. And just like the first one, I'm gonna pull the slack out of it. So I've got a good bow and arrow configuration here. Okay, now, my goal up top is to take his collar and wrap it all the way across his neck, okay? Most people think what's happening here is that I'm choking him with my hand. It's not my hand that's doing the choking, it's me taking this collar and wrapping it all the way across the neck. So when I do this, I'm gonna further move my body away. It's one of the few times when you have the back you wanna get away from the person, you don't wanna be tight. And I'm gonna take that collar and I'm gonna wrap it across his neck like a knife cutting his throat. I go from here to here. Okay, now I can't hang out here for long because Tim's gonna pass out, but I wanna pin my heels and stretch, hanging him. I'm gonna look over my bottom shoulder and I'm gonna draw my bottom arm away. Altogether, if you have the correct grips, it's gonna produce a really quick tap. All right, last one, this is the advanced version, okay? So this time I'm rolling against, you know, purple belt, brown belt, black belt, somebody who really understands the game and understands how bad it is to have their back taken. So same start, okay? We're gonna go for that chin slam again, okay? Start here, let it go, spin and sit through right away. Now when I get here, he doesn't let me get that bottom hook in, he balls up. And then he runs his hips away from me, right? So I've got nothing, I have no connection with my legs at all, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure all my top seatbelt stuff is tight, specifically now that shoulder into the back of the head because that's gonna make him feel like he's cranking his own neck the more he runs away. So I really need to keep that tight. So we're gonna pedal. And the pedaling is just so you can learn how to build momentum to sit up. And I get to my elbow, okay? Now from this position, I have a base on my elbow, this bottom elbow here. I'm gonna put my foot on the mat and I'm gonna use those two points of contact to elevate bring my bottom shin under his shoulder, and then sit him on the pillow. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna move a little bit so everybody can see the angles here. 
So when I get to this position, I can't be lazy with my seatbelt. If I unclasp this or if I loosen this up, he's just gonna fall out of my lap. I want the person picked up nice and high into my lap. And then look, again, we, we call this like the pillow, okay? So this is above the head here and he's resting on my shin. So from your angle, you should be able to see a portion of my shin here. You should see that my knee is just slightly above his head. And this is all super tight, especially that shoulder into the neck, okay? Now, to actually just take the back from here, I would wanna put this body hook in, so I'd wanna throw this over the body. You wanna resist the urge to put a true hook in, because this might turn into some deep half guard variation for him. I wanna come all the way over the body, okay? Now, that would be great if he just let me do that, but like I said, this is a purple belt or brown belt or black belt, and they really know the game. So he's not just gonna let me drop that body hook in. There's a relationship between this body hook going in and then what's going on with the neck. So what I wanna do is I actually wanna get to a point where I can just finish the fight right here. So what I'm gonna do is set up that exact same choke, same mechanics that we did before for the, for the intermediate back take. So I take this hand that's under his arm, I punch the collar down, and now it's easy to feed this thumb. That can happen really fast. And you can get this in even deeper now because of the angle that you have. So that's the first one that I set, okay? Um, a lot can happen when that grip goes in. People tend to want to like roll to their stomach, roll away, go ahead and do that. That unwinds the choke. So if I don't control him well, if I feel like he's doing that, um, what I wanna do is I wanna, get, uh, I wanna get under his elbow. So as he goes to roll, I'll hike his elbow up like this, and that can really slow or stop his rotation, okay? Um, there are variations where when you chop this up, you can put the back of your hand behind the person's head, you can reach for the floor, draw your shoulder back the exact same way we did before, but we can get a nice finish there. Um, it's not my favorite finish because against people who have like really flexible torsos, they can still roll through. It can be a little bit chaotic. What I would prefer instead is when I get to this position, feed that thumb, so feed that choking thumb, hop over to the other collar, just like we did for the first choke variation. This gives me better upper body control. Is it as strong a choke? Maybe, maybe not, okay? But this is gonna help control that opposite shoulder, so if he does try to roll, I can pull him back in this direction, okay? So I've got two really nice choking grips set. At this point, he's gonna be defending his neck, right? So as he defends his neck, now it opens up the body hook. Okay, I can drop that body hook in much better. Now from here, with the body hook set, I'm gonna start rolling to my back. You're gonna see me free my right leg, and it's gonna loop over his shoulder. You okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I'm gonna to try to close the guard, but if I can't, I'm just gonna use my legs, pinning my heels and squeezing my knees. I'm gonna lay back, and I'm gonna look over that same choking shoulder, drawing my arm back. I'm gonna get a real strong finish there. 